So the day has been around not just to celebrate the work that is done by nurses, but also an opportunity to, you know, turn the spotlight onto some of the issues that they face. Zikona Chona was at attending one of the official events for International Nurses Day. It's always good to gather with nurses on a day like today because it's one of the few times where they can actually feel appreciated and um, really understand the value of their contribution to society. They take care of us when we're most vulnerable, see? And if they also get the opportunity to appreciate themselves mm -hmm. and celebrate that the, the work that they do. There was a poet who got up at the Danosa um, celebrations in Pretoria today and said, we as nurses, we need to be bold, we need to shine because we are literally the lifeline of society. But of course, with that comes them speaking about their challenges that they face daily. One of them being um, the fact that the facilities that they work at are short-stopped, many of them complaining about low wages in particular. A big part of today was also the migration of healthcare workers. There's a call on government to hire and employ nurses and doctors and the private sector as well so that they don't leave the country with their skills. Mm. Also on the agenda, mental health care of healthcare workers. Many nurses saying that they, it doesn't seem to be a priority where they work. We spoke to one who says she just wants to be asked how she is. Given the fact that COVID-19 um, was a challenge on all of us, for them in particular, being at the front line was even mm -hmm. more challenging and they had to deal with a lot more um, mental health-wise because they were dealing with this pandemic that they did not know anything about. Their colleagues around them were dying. Many of them were scared to even go home because they feared that they were putting the lives of their family members in danger. Very interesting, though, at the start of the pandemic in South Africa, um, nurses could volunteer to, war to work in COVID-19 wards. And the, the healthcare worker, the nurse that we spoke to said, even among nurses, it was a very lonely and isolated um, time for them, given the fact that even their colleagues um, would say, we don't want to interact with you because you work in a, in a COVID-19 ward. So she said during, during that time, mm -hmm. um, she felt depressed. She really um, thinks that um, the health department needs to have social workers or psychologists in, in hospitals to speak to them, not on the daily, but regularly, just to check up on how they're doing. Let's take a listen at one of those healthcare workers that to say. I need somebody to talk to me. And they tend to think that nurses are strong. They don't cry, you know, like, they don't have a heart, you know, like, they see us as these strong beings who don't have emotions anymore, who, whom the emotions are dead. And our emotions are still there. We still feel pain. We do feel pain. We do feel affected when we lose a patient. And what Fisana is saying there is so important because during this time, we had so many nurses who died mm -hmm. as a result of COVID-19. They were also the people who were raising the alarm bells of the quality of protective equipment that they were receiving, others who weren't even receiving it at all. So from a union perspective, I mean, how are they going to ensure that some of these issues that are being raised will reach the ear of government? And a part of today's program was to actually talk about that, to reflect on the, how the health care system is in, in South Africa, but also to have conversations on how them as health care workers and as organizations, mm -hmm. Nahawa is also there, can contribute towards conversations as well as efforts by uh, stakeholders or government on how the sector can be improved um, to better the quality for not only the healthcare workers but also the experience of the patients when they do go to a public healthcare facility, for example. So for now, I think a big part of it was just to start the conversation, but then mm -hmm. again, we have this conversation each and every year and the challenges don't seem to change or don't seem to get better. But on the back of that, we had these young nurses who are excited about going into the field and saying that they also feel honored to be among old nurses who could share their experiences about working in nursing in South Africa. And a lot of nurses talk about the passion dying, the fire in them dying, given those challenges that you've said with regards to access to equipment or being short-staffed and overworked. And they had to share those experiences with young nurses. And it really is about them being real about their working experience. And let's hope that something is done 
for example, with regards to staffing in healthcare facilities, there's a call for government to permanently employ these, the, the nurses and healthcare workers that they've given um, uh, temporary contracts to at the start or to help government fight sure. the COVID-19 pandemic. So there's definitely a huge call for uh, nurses and doctors and any healthcare workers to be employed and just for government to take better care of the nurses because they, at the end of the day, they are at the front line and they're helping this stay alive. And, and I suppose today is a good day to say thank you. Thank you to the nurses of the country and the work that they do in taking care of everybody that needs their help and support, like I say, when we are most vulnerable.